action. All right, hey guys. So welcome back to the Purpose Eagle Podcast, where I am your host, yours truly, Deshanti Dina. Hope you guys are blessed by this video. Um, so while before you get into the video, just go on ahead and leave a thumbs up. Just by faith, you know this video is gonna be good. And when the video is over, just leave a comment. Share what your favorite part was. Share what part was impactful for you. And then also subscribe to our channel so you do not miss out on any more of our amazing videos. All right, so let's get right into the video. I want to look at some amazing women in the Bible. Maybe not all of them were moms, but they all had some type of a system of limitation. And so in this season of entrepreneurship and talking all things business, I want us to look at the Bible through business lens really quickly. And I want to pinpoint two women that really stuck out to me concerning wealth. Now, of course, the first woman is going to be the woman from John chapter four in the New Testament. And she was coined as the woman of Samaria. Of course, she probably had a name, but the Bible doesn't mention her name. All we know is that this woman is very unique because traditionally it was known that the women would go to the well to draw water when it was cool. They wouldn't go in the heat of the day. And if you read the Bible, you would realize that she actually went in like noonday when the sun was super hot, when there weren't really other women going. So it wasn't really the time that she should have been there. Now, something that the Lord pointed out to me last night as I was reading the scripture was that sometimes contention has to arise before God gets to you. And I want to leave you comfort with that point right there because sometimes we're like god there's so much going on there's chaos going on it just feels like the atmosphere is full of just confusion and all of these different things sometimes that is the way how you're going to get jesus to you let me explain so for the woman we already know that she had a whole situation with five guys <laughs> she said i don't have a husband jesus said you're right you have five get some help and the one that you're with now is not even your husband so this lady had a number of relationships that was a whole sphere of confusion there but even jesus himself was leaving a place of confusion because the bible says that when he was in the the region where john was the pharisees were starting rumors if you will um, saying that Jesus was now baptizing, even though Jesus wasn't really baptizing, it was his disciples that were baptizing. The Bible says that he then left that region and had to get to Galilee. So Jesus having to leave that area, most likely for contention, or it was just time for him to leave, he left and had needs to pass through Samaria. So I pray that even now, if you're going through any turmoil, if you're going through a season of confusion or contention, it just feels like, Lord, this is too much. Just know that Jesus is in your neighborhood. Now, here's what I really want to get into. So we're looking at St. John chapter four. We're going to start at five, verse five. It says, then cometh he into a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar or Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Now, Jacob's well was there. Therefore, Jesus, being wearied of his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it? That thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which I am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it was that says to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. Right now we're dealing with a woman that has scale over her eyes, much like a lot of us right now. We have scale over our eyes and sometimes we're like, Lord, I need you to show me my well. I need you to show me my resources. I need you to show me my strategy or how I'm going to make money or how I'm going to get through. Remember, we're talking about things in entrepreneurship right now, right? And we're like, Lord, 
like, what do I do now? I need the business strategy. This woman had scales over her eyes. So Jesus says to her essentially, and we know that he's talking about the plan of salvation, right? But he says to her, if you knew the gift of God that was right before you and who it is that is actually asking you for a drink from the well, you would your mind would be blown and you would think differently. The scales would be moved from your eyes. So a prayer point that I even want to drop right here is, Lord, open up my eyes. Help me not to miss the gift of God that you've placed right before them. Had Jesus not intervened, this woman would have literally missed the well of living waters. And so I even want to use that to bring us to our next woman that I want to talk about. But this lady was so focused on this physical well, Jacob's well, right? It was her inheritance. And she prided herself on this thing. In other words, she was sitting on her laurels because this is something that the Samaritans probably boasted about. The fact that Jacob built this well in their region so high up in Israel, right? You Jews, you stay down there, but you don't have Jacob's well. We have Jacob's well. But they didn't even know that Jesus was the well of living waters. Anytime you come in contact with Jesus, and this is the point that I want to leave on this video today, forget nothing else. Anytime you come into contact with the Savior, Jesus Christ, there is an illumination that comes into your life. There's, there's a scale that's removed off of your eyes and light comes. One of the definitions of light is not only physical light that comes and shines in. It's literally clarity. It's direction. It's where do I go? It's what step do I take? This is what it means. When we talk about light, as far as it comes to business, pray this prayer, Lord, if there are indeed wells before me, things that I need to see, reveal them to me so that I will not miss this opportunity. Do you know what a well is? A well is not a bucket. A well is not a bucket. A bucket you drink and there's only so much water you can drink before it's done. A well is literally a system of irrigation. It gets water from underground. It's the groundwater that you reach down and it's forever springing up. Jesus is the well of light. Now, the next person that I want us to focus on is the woman called Hagar in Genesis. Now, Hagar was a bondswoman. She was a servant of Sarah. When the promise was finally fulfilled through Sarah and she had the promised son, Isaac, there came a time where, again, there was contention with Ishmael and Isaac and Hagar and Sarah. And so Sarah says, Abraham, you've got to send her away. Abraham sends her away. God consoles him and says, this is the right thing to do. Listen to Sarah because her child is the promised child. So now Hagar has to be sent away with a limitation. So the woman at Samaria, her limitation was the bucket. She left her bucket because she could only carry so much water and she drank from the well of living water, which was Jesus. Hagar's limitation was a bottle. It probably wasn't nice water from Walgreens, but it was a bottle. It was a flask. How much water can be held in this little bottle? So the Bible says that when they were sent out into the desert, and the water was basically finished. Hagar put her son on one side and then she sat over on the other side and she began to weep. She didn't have the strength in her to watch her baby die. Her baby was crying because he was hungry, he was thirsty, and she had nothing to give him. And then she began to cry out unto the Lord. Today, I don't know what you are waiting for. Pray that El Roy the God that sees you will show up on your behalf. So let's read the scripture. Genesis chapter 21, verse 14 and going. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took a bread and a bottle of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle or other words the water was finished and she cast the child under one of the shrubs and she went and sat on her own over against him a good way off as it were 
a bow shot, for she said, Let me not see the death of my child. And she sat over against him, lifted up her voice, and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What aileth thee, or what troubles thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God had heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. Verse 19 is the key point. And God opened her eyes. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. So this is such a powerful scripture because the woman had gotten to the point where death was near. No more food. She had no more water. Her limitation was this, and she didn't want to see her son die. So she put her son on one side. She sat away off while he cried. And while the baby cried, that is a word right there. While the baby cried, the angel of the Lord heard the baby. What is that baby that you have on the inside of you? What is that vision, that thing that is dying on the inside of you, that thing that God has gifted you to grow up and to nurture, but you don't have the funds, you don't have the money, you don't have the resources or the water to feed this baby. Begin to cry out to the Lord to open your eyes so that you don't no longer see the limitation, but you see the well. Somebody type that in the comments. Lord, help me not to see the system of limitation, but help me to see the well. Help me to see the well. The Lord is willing to open your eyes if you will let him open your eyes. To see that well, to see that thing that is going to bring in resources, that is going to bring in food, that in the midst of famine, your mouth will never be dry. Your mouth will never go hungry, but you'll always be fed. Why? Because the Lord is breaking the systems of limitation and he's providing the well. As a matter of fact, you're probably sitting on top of the well. The well was in her vicinity. She just couldn't see it. So may the scales be broken off of our eyes so that we can see the well. Last thing I want to leave with you is this. I remember back in last year, 2023, I believe it was around February, I was praying to the Lord that he would just grant me resources and grant me a business idea. I knew that I had to write this book, Ego Find Your Voice. Um, I knew that he was calling me, but I didn't know what exactly was his plan. So I began to pray to him and I said, God, I need you to help me. And so God can help you in many ways. When you cry out to him, when you give to his people, sometimes when you fast. And these are the three ways. When you pray, you fast or you give. And this is found even in Matthew chapter five or Matthew chapter six. When Jesus speaks to the children on Mount Olivet, on Mount Olivet, he says to them, when you pray, don't go on the street corners, but go in your closet. Be very private with the Lord when you're praying to him. Right. And then fasting. When you fast, don't be going with your mouth dry and looking crazy. He says, anoint yourself, put your perfumes on, wash your face, look good. Nobody should know that you're fasting. And the last thing he says is when you give. So these are three commands that the Lord is looking for us to do. These are different ways that we put our requests known to the Lord. This is how we reach the heart of God. When we give to his people, when we pray, and when we fast. But in this sense, the Lord was telling me to give. I worked to pay off a huge bill, and I was really excited um, and giving me some money. So in my mind, I was like, this is going to my savings. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to do anything. A big amount of money. And the Lord said to give two thirds of that money. And I was like, the devil is a liar. I rebuke you, devil, in Jesus name. The Lord said, give the money. And I said, you know what, Lord? 
mammon is not my God, you are my God. So I don't bow down to money. I bow down to what you say. You give me the power to have wealth. That's what Deuteronomy 8 and 18 says. And that's one of my favorite verses right now in this season. He gives us the power, the kaio, to get wealth. And the minute that I released the money, I was on my way to an office that I used to work for, a a dentist in Danbury. And I passed by a street that said Well Street. Southwell, and I couldn't understand why it stuck out to me so much. But again, the way how God speaks to me is sometimes I can see words, like obviously bold print here and there, and sometimes it means nothing, but I know when the Lord is speaking to me. And I kept seeing systems of water. I saw well, I saw South Well, South Lake, all of these different things. And then God gave me the revelation that it is these wells that you're going to use as different streams of income that is going to help you to pay off the lake, the bigger bodies of water. It's these wells that I'm going to give to you here and there and everywhere. Little streams of income, like um, that's mentioned in the book of Ecclesiastes. There are different streams that I'm going to begin to give you. I'm going to begin to open your eyes. Mind you, I've been working at this place, helping out this dentist for like since the month of January the end of December even, and I've always passed by that street and I've never saw the name. God took the scales off of my eyes and he began to give me wells and he began to give me resources and he began to put me in the school of wisdom. I had to start studying things. I had to start learning things and he began to give me different ideas and different strategies. So again, today we're looking at the Bible through business lens, right? And we are looking at wells today. It's time for us to open our eyes. What is the Lord trying to show you, woman of God? What is the Lord trying to show you, man of God? I'm targeting the women this week because, again, it's Mother's Day week. It's Mother's Month, right, where we're celebrating the mothers. In the Proverbs, 31 woman was known to be a woman of resources and wells and strategies. She was compared to a a merchant ship. She had the ability to see a field and say, I'm going to buy it and create a vineyard from because she was able to see the well the limitations were broken off of her so i want to leave these two women with you you can always go back and study it we know that the greater goal of these scriptures was to point people to salvation to point people to god but we want to look at it as in the sphere of entrepreneurship and business even now that God can be everything. He can be your salvation. He can be your education. He can be your your CEO. And look at this. When you have a CEO, a person that is the chief, right? The one that's over you. And they want to give you direction on how to grow their business. How can you know what they want if you don't sit down and talk to them or they talk to you? Like you can say, CEO or chief, I've been going through this, 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 and this employee's not doing this, and this one is not doing this, and this one's not doing this. And then you walk away. You don't allow that person to give you direction and clarity. How are you ever going to know what to do? So take some time, spend some time before the Lord, and let him give you strategy. All right? If you enjoy this podcast, leave your favorite um. Leave your favorite thing that I said below, whatever your favorite part was. If you want to add some input on that, leave it below. And I'm pretty sure we all are going to want to know about it. All right. So love you guys so much. And thank you for tuning in. Next week, we have a special guest in the sphere of ministry mingled with the marketplace. And I'm really excited to have her on. So subscribe so you don't miss out on that video. All right. Love you guys. See you later, Eagles.